In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I have a difficult relationship with Paul the Apostle. It has been said that Paul took the religion of Jesus and turned it into the religion about Jesus. There is some truth to this statement. In Paul's letters, we don't see him really referencing Jesus' teaching or even really quoting Jesus. The majority of Paul's letters seem to be spent preaching Christ crucified and responding to problems in churches that he helped establish. And if there was ever a church with problems, it was the church in Corinth. Corinth was this new city of new wealth, and it sat at a very strategic place for trade. It was one of the many crossroads for the Roman Empire. Paul founded the church at Corinth and stayed with them for a long time. While he was there, he worked alongside others. He worshiped in the community and he taught the good news. But it was when Paul left that the troubles really began. One thing that we need to remember is that at this time, those who followed Jesus were trying desperately to figure out who Jesus was. Who was this Jesus, this Messiah, in relationship to the law and to the Jewish faith? At the time of Paul's second letter to the church in Corinth, there was no church. There was no separate body of believers. Those who followed Jesus would see themselves as Jews and Gentiles who believed that Jesus was the Messiah. Much of the worship that happened still centered around the synagogue. It won't be until the end of the first century that the church will emerge as a separate body from the Jewish faith. And it won't be until the early fourth century that the Nicene Creed is even developed. Paul and others didn't even have access to the theological texts, let alone the written Gospels. Those would not even hit the scene for another 20 to 30 years. And so there were these competing ideas of who Jesus was and is and what the Gospel was and was not. And this is the core of the issue that Paul is addressing in this portion of 2 Corinthians. Paul is defending his authority, and Paul is certain that the gospel that he preached was the gospel. And he writes, And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. These words of Paul stopped me in my tracks when I read them again for the first time. Paul's context for this statement is that the gospel that he preached was the gospel given to him by Jesus. That gospel, that gospel is true and it is right. And if some cannot get it or grasp it, if it is veiled for some, then it is veiled to those that are perishing. It is veiled because they serve the God of this world. And yet, as I reflected on these words, the question that kept coming back to me was simply this. Is the gospel veiled for me? And the answer was a startling Yes. The good news of Jesus Christ is radical. It calls us to love everyone, to forgive freely, to give generously and extravagantly. And after 2,000 years, it seems that familiarity has stripped the radical nature of Jesus' words from the gospel. 
When I read that I am to love everyone, even those with whom I am at odds, then I become as confused and as terrified as Peter, James, and John when they saw the transfigured Christ. That call to love can be terrifying, especially when the recipient of that love is undeserving in my eyes. And so I can try to fudge just a bit. I can respond to the call of Jesus to love with a lukewarm, can I start with just liking them first? Or perhaps I can tell Jesus all the reasons why that that person is unlovable. Really, Jesus? Me? Me love a proud boy? Have a seat. I'll get some coffee and we're going to have a chat, Jesus. And if I do any of those things, I am as lost as Peter on a mountaintop who suggests that after seeing Christ in all of his glory, that they should build three booths to memorialize it. The good news of Jesus calls us to move beyond our comfort. It calls us to be uncomfortable, even extremely uncomfortable at times. As clergy and others gathered in Charlottesville in August 2017, there was a non-violence training before what turned out to be a deadly day of confrontation. I did not attend that training, but a participant shared with me about that training as we sat inside of a church and prayed. Some, she said at that training, were nervous and scared. Questions flew about this and about that, and the answers always remained the same. Deep, abiding love. What if they push me? Deep, abiding love. What if they yell profanity at me or call me offensive names? Deep, abiding love love. What if they hit me? Can I hit them back? Deep, abiding love. There are times when the world around us needs us to move beyond the sanctuary of the four walls of our churches to clothe ourselves in deep, abiding love, to walk boldly into this world, and to live more fully into the good news. And I believe that now is one of those times. Is the gospel veiled to me? Yes, it is somewhat. And I am grateful that as I lean into and live into re greater relationship with God and with you and with the community of this world, that gospel becomes unveiled. And I see the good news in new and different ways. And when I see it in new and different ways, I realize that I am being led from perishing to resurrection into new life. And I believe it starts with deep, abiding, and radical love. That love from God that love that changes and transforms and transfigures. A love that is represented with that transfigured Christ on a mountaintop. Jesus is there with Moses and Elijah who represent the law and the prophets. And we are told to love God with all of our hearts and minds 
and souls and to love our neighbors as ourselves. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. I am grateful for the work that our community is undertaking with social justice, with Richmonders involved to strengthen communities or risk, and with the Virginia Holistic Justice Initiative. This work will provide us with opportunities to see the gospel in new ways, in new lights, and dare I say, unveiled. My prayer for you and for me this day and always is simply this. May each of us become increasingly uncomfortable. May the gospel continue to be unveiled in our lives. May we continue to see Jesus in new and different ways. May we go from perishing to abundant life. May we carry and be carried by deep abiding love. And then may we reclaim and change this world one square inch at a time. Amen.